And this type of work just takes patience. Uh, I've had trees where it takes over an hour to get the roots sorted out, washed, and ready for root pruning. Especially on collected trees. It can be very, a very long process. So wherever you see caked soil, just kind of get in there with the root rake or the chopstick or something and try and loosen that up. See what roots are there. Because you don't want that soil all congested in there. Alright, I think I've got enough soil removed that I can start the root pruning and I may have to go in and rewash it once I've got some of the you know crossing roots and that removed as I get this root base reduced to uh, something a little nicer. All right here I go with the root pruning. There's a root growing instead of radial it's kinked over so let's get rid of that one. Bye bye. And again we're looking for our roots to flow down from the trunk into the soil. So there's some roots that are too high, they're sticking up here. They're kind of growing up out of the soil, so I've got to prune those back. Like that. Scissors can make a good root rake too. Here's some more sticking up here. Get rid of those. This one's sticking up, we'll get rid of that one. Here's another one. You can see it's sticking up out of the soil. Get rid of that. There's one here sticking up. Get rid of that. This one's growing absolutely horizontal, so I don't want that, so I'm taking it off. I want them going down into the soil. Now, this is where you can use a toothbrush to kind of help you brush the soil away as you work on the roots. Um, get a little bit of water. Here's another one sticking up. Let's get rid of that. And, you know, I'm pruning it off, but I'm not sure where it comes from. We'll see that later on. I may do more pruning on them. This one comes at a funny angle here. It comes off. This one's sticking up. It's got to come off. This one's sticking up. It's coming off too. I got some. I got a big. I don't know if you can see that, this big red root here. It's uh, kind of go horizontal and then curves upwards. I think that's going to be one for removal. Or at least, you know, reduced back. So I'll come in here and I'll just cut that part that sticks up off. So that takes a lot of roots off with it. Because it was, it was a very thick root. And that root will regrow, I'm sure. Back here, I've got more roots sticking up. They've got to come off. This one sticks up. Off it comes. That one. This one's cranked over. Off it comes. A bit more brushing here. So you can see now the basic overall look of the roots is flowing down into the soil now, at least most of them. This one's sticking up, I'll get rid of it. This one's sticking up. Too long. 
on here. Sticking up. Okay, uh, here's another one sticking up. Sticking up out of the soil. Okay, I'm going to rewash the roots. I want to get the soil out here and get a better look at what's going on. I have rewashed the root system and I noticed that over here you can see this root was really thick part of its dead here I'll just prune that off but it's very there's at least one and maybe two really thick roots in this region and I can't really get in there very well um, you can see this one was pruned off here it's regrown underneath here it's it's not the worst root in the world but it is getting thick compared to all the others and especially in this section of the tree I've got at least you know two really thick roots that are getting out of proportion so I need to prune off at least this part here like that And I'm going to take the top of this root off, like that. Take that dead part off. And try and sort this area out so it's not so thick. Otherwise, you know, you might get these roots fusing into one root. This might become too thick a root in that area. Okay, so I'm going to prune this off here. Up there. Prune this off here. I'm really reducing these thick roots back. That's looking better. I've got to do some cleanup here. Concentrating on the root pruning, not my camera work here. They always do that. It does take a lot of concentration doing this. So I'm just pruning away, getting rid of the really long ones now. Striving, striving for a balanced root system. This one's a bit of a funny angle here. I'm going to cut it and redirect it. I'll take it right back to here. Something will grow in a bit of a bit more of a radial pattern there, I hope. Hope you can see all this. Probably not. I'm probably going too high there. Now there's a root here that kind of is a wrapping root. I've got to get rid of that. Wrapping around the trunk. Strangler root, you don't want those. I think I'm getting fairly close. I'm debating whether I should take that one right off. I think I should. It's too thick. Okay, let's go underneath now. There's a root going right across the bottom of the root base. Just prune it flat on the bottom. You might be saying this is quite a severe reduction, Nigel. Yes, it is. I thought I would have a better root system on this tree. Okay, that is root pruned. Am I too heavy here still? Yes, I am. Go um, back to here. Okay. 
That's better. It's a good looking root system now. Okay, I think I'm ready to plant the trees. Before I plant the main tree, I'm wondering if I should reduce it in height also. It's getting to be quite a large tree. I think the root base looks pretty good from almost any angle, so I don't really, I'm not limited to a specific front. I could, you know, take it back to here. Should be a nice height. I think I will. So, I'm going to cut the top of the tree off. Ah, oh, wrong tool. Yes, I'm going to cut the top of the tree off too. Right here. Okay, big, big cut coming up. Here I go. Always cutting, you know, a flat cut on these birch. So there's another cutting I can try and root. And then I'll just take this apex back a bit here. Like that. Okay. Drastic work to the birches today. I'll put the birch in water until I've got the pot all ready for planting. So this pot, uh, I saw Jay from Blue Jay Bolts. I bought one of these pots. And he got it at Kim's Nature, where Wayne sells his pots. And I said, oh, if you're ever up that way and you see one like this, if you could buy one for me. So Jay did. So that was a nice of Jay to get me this pot. Uh, so I'll get uh, drainage screens in here, base layer of soil, and then we're ready for planting. Kind of level it out a bit. And then I can try the trees out in the pot. So here are the two trees. You know, severe reduction on them today, severe root pruning. So I'm putting two trees in the pot and I need to match. You can see there's a curvature to each tree. This one curves up one direction. So does the seedling. It has a, a curve from the root base. So I would say generally you would want those curves to match. So right now they're both curving in the same direction. You don't want them curving towards each other like that or I, you could have them curving away from each other um, sort of like that but I find when they curve away from each other it's like gives me the feeling that the trees are trying to get away from each other that they're not happy with each other so I kind of like them curving the same direction it gives them a windblown feel so I think this will be the front of both trees just like that. So I'll plant the larger tree in the front and the other one slightly behind. So here I go, I'll place them in the pot. Well, they don't look together. It looks like one tree over here and one tree over there. You've got to make them look like a unit, so I have to get them closer together. And you can actually overlap the roots. Let me show you from above. Here's a look at the two root bases, you know, quite far apart. So what you can do is you can overlap them. So the one root base goes here and the other one on top like that. And the two root base will become intertwined in the future. And you repot it as one tree. So there's a look getting the trees closer together. So now I'll have a look and see how the composition looks from the distance. So there's a look at the composition now and you can see the two trees look a little bit uh, connected. They look closer together but the whole planting is too far to the left. It's I got all this space in the pot here that looks like I'm not using it much so I think I'm going to move the entire planting a little bit here. The other thing I can do to get these trees tighter together is you can rotate them so if I rotate it more this one goes more to the background this one more to the foreground and it closes that distance between the two trees so now you can see they're definitely look connected to each other it doesn't look like two trees plopped in a pot just randomly 
So I think that composition's looking better. Now when you plant two trees close together like this, it starts, you've got to integrate them, the branches on them. You can't have a branch from the smaller tree growing towards the larger tree. So the two trees will get styled together, their branch placement and that. So you'll basically have like one top to the composition with two trunks. You won't style each tree to be a separate tree like a forest planting. It, they'll be styled as one kind of unit or one composition. So I think it's getting better. I, I'm going to try and get my trees even closer if that's possible. Like that. See that makes the trees even more connected now when they're closer together at the base. So I think that's going to be a good composition there. Uh, I could come just a little bit more central to the pot here. I just noticed by rotating this main tree like that, I've got a branch coming out the front now, which isn't looking so hot. So I need to, I think my front, yeah, my front got turned around here. There's the angle. And the angle of this one is like that. So I think more like that is better. Yeah, I don't know how they got so messed up there, but let's have a look at that from the distance. Before we do that, let's look at the root base here so you can see the big tree, the little tree, and how close they are, how the root bases are intertwined and how in the future, you know, they'll grow into a single tree with twin trunks. Here's a look at the composition again. Yeah, I think once I get the angles of the trees better, I think that'll look quite nice. I may in the future have to remove this branch or direct it more out the back to give the other seedling more room in that spot. Uh, I could do that now, I guess. I don't think it would hurt to take that branch off entirely actually. So I'll do that. I'll uh, take it off, give this little seedling a bit of room. So here I go. Like that. Now the seedling has room to grow up beside the main tree here. It gets its own light here. The main tree gets its own light here. Before I add my bonsai soil, I'm just going to comb these roots out, uh, try and get them as radial as possible. I think that's actually pretty good. Okay, I can begin adding soil now. And you know, a lot of people would think, you know, why are you fussing with the positioning of these seedlings so much. You know, just let them grow and worry about the composition later on. But when you're fusing the two trees together like this, uh, it's important because you don't get a second chance. It's it, You can still separate the tree in the future, but it would be very, very hard. So that's why I'm getting this composition looking good now, and then it'll just get better and better into the future rather than the other way around. So now I'm going to adjust the angles of the trees. So I think, I don't want them parallel. That would look terrible. So I guess right how they are is pretty good. So I'm gonna work the soil into the roots now. You can see how they're bouncing around. That's because there's air pockets under the roots. Once you get that soil worked in, they stop bouncing around settle in and become firm in the pot. All right, here goes more soil. So I'm bringing it up to the base of the the root base, uh, where it begins to flare out. So I'm making sure all my roots are safely buried in the soil. There'll be time to expose the nice roots later on in this tree's life. Now is not the time. Now I want those roots to recover and grow and this tree to have a good summer. So aftercare will be critical. I'll keep it in the greenhouse here, out of the wind, 
out of the direct sunlight. I'll keep it on the floor of the greenhouse and I'll keep it well watered. If you let it dry out, your tree can be in a lot of trouble. I didn't know I was going to be making a, a twin trunk birch planting today, but I'm happy with the result. I think it's a good use for these birch. Birch, you often see them growing in clumps like this in people's lawns, up north, in the woods, everywhere. They, um, they generally sucker up from the roots and grow in clumps. So it's not unusual to see birches, birch trees growing like this. It would be probably more unusual to see a single one. Okay, so that's ready for watering. All right, here I go, fresh rainwater or melted snow water. You can see it's draining really, really well, the soil. Move my tools out of the way. Water the top of the trees. Now another thing you can do is mist the trees to keep the leaves kind of moist while they recover. You don't want the leaves drying out and going crispy or you've probably lost your trees. Okay, that's good watering. Check out all the water coming from here. It really flushed all the dust out of the soil too, which is important to keep all those nice air spaces open in the soil. Here is a look at the composition now. I think it's a big improvement. I think I've taken two kind of seedlings or you know this one was starting to get a little more mature and given them uh, a theme uh, you know a twin trunk birch like this I think it's something that you know the style will go on into the future I think they're both in a good size pot now fresh soil those roots can grow over the summer the trees can grow recover I think they'll have an exciting future ahead Maybe the more important question is, how confident am I that these trees are going to live? I think fairly confident. Uh, the roots weren't active at all, so I definitely got to the root pruning and repotting in time before the roots began to grow, which is always good. Uh, I've reduced the top of the trees, not in proportion with the root base, but definitely took some of that load off the top of the tree, so that's going to help them too. And the trees, the first tree, the smaller one, had a, a very good root base on it. The second one, there was a good root base hidden in there amongst all those twisted roots. I kind of exposed it, reduced that root base down, but there's still a lot of root mass in there. Uh, I think it's going to recover fine. I think both trees are going to live into the future. And I'm looking forward to hopefully giving you an update on this twin trunk birch tree in the future. So that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bullseye Zone.